Welcome to this section of the tutorial where we're going to explore the abilities of the TI-89 to handle vectors, uh, vector operations. So trying to find the, the norm of a vector, which is the length of a vector, the uh, cross product, the dot product, and a uh, unit vector is something that we're going to talk about also. So we're going to cover four main operations. All right. Now the first thing uh, for you to know is that the way that you input a vector into this calculator is using these square brackets. So for instance, if we wanted to put a two-dimensional vector in, just a vector in the xy plane, forget about three dimensions for a moment, then what you would do is uh, if this uh, uh, vector had an x component of 1 uh, in the x direction, you'd put it a 1 like that, and if it had a y component of 5, uh, then you would put it like this. So notice right away, this looks exactly, almost exactly, like what we did in the last section where we were just inputting coordinate points. But when you think about it, that makes total sense because the definition of a vector is, if you just go off to like a, a XY plane here, if we have a vector out here, like a length and an arrow, arrow tip out here, then it's completely represented by the tip of that arrow out here. So if the tip of that arrow is at 1 comma 5, then you would say your vector has an X component of, of 1 and a Y component of 5. And so the arrow would be coming up to the tip like this. That's basically the same exact representation as, as a point in the XY plane. And that's why vector operations uh, become so easy to deal with when you represent them this way. So uh, basically you're going to be representing your vectors exactly the way we represented those points in the XY plane with the square brackets. So you already have some familiarity with it. So this guy means uh, if you want to think about vector notation, if you're studying vectors, this would be 1i plus 5j because i is in the x direction, j is in the y direction. Um, if you wanted to make it a three-dimensional vector, you just put a z direction here as well. So 1i plus 5j plus 8k. i, j, k is just a notation for dealing with vectors. It means x, y, and z. So 1 is in the x direction, 5 is in the y direction, 8 is in the z direction. It's just a point that represents the tip of that arrow. All right, so that's how we that's how we represent vectors. Now, before we get going more, you can store vectors into variables to be used later, which is nice because if you type in a very long vector and you're doing operations, it's you know kind of cumbersome sometimes. So you put your vector in there, hit the store button, and you just pick a letter just like anything else. So we could put it in G, or we could type a name out if we'd like to, a G A B or something like that. We could stick it in there. We hit enter, and you see the calculator's accepted that. So if we go up. We clear all this stuff out and then we put G back on the stack and hit enter then we get our vector back so we can use the letters that we have identified to um, if we if we use them a lot we might make more sense to uh, to do that so what do we want to do first what operation do we want to do first probably the easiest one to understand is the norm or the length it's the, it's really two words for the same exact operation you have a vector it's pointing out in space and you want to know what the length of that vector is so that's called the norm so you find that guy in the catalog menu, unfortunately. It only lives in the catalog menu. So norm begins with the letter N. So I'm going to hit this guy to send us down to the ends. And we're going to scroll down here until we get to norm. And there it is. So we're going to go to norm. I'm just going to hit enter. And it's going to put norm out here on the command line. It's got an open parenthesis. And it's waiting for you to type your vector in. All right. So let's go ahead and open a bracket. And let's do something easy so you'll understand it. Let's do 0 for x and 4 for y. And let's go ahead and close this vector off and close the parentheses off. So what this means is we've entered a vector with an x component of 0 and a y component of 4. So if you think about an xy plane, this vector is lying all along the y-axis. So when you, when you visualize it, you can see the length of this vector should be 4 because it's directly up and down like this. So we hit enter and it tells us the length is 4. That's pretty easy to visualize because you can visualize how this vector goes. But what if you put in, you know, what if the x component was negative uh, 10 and the y component was, you know, uh, 15? What would the length of this vector be? The x component would be way over here. The y component would be way over here because x is negative, y is positive. And you're really looking for that length, the length of that arrow. So that's what the norm function does. It calculates it. It gives us an exact answer. You can convert that to an approximate. 18.02 is the length. Now just so you know, when you study physics or vectors or calculus, what you'll learn is the norm of vector or the length of a vector is nothing more than the Pythagorean theorem. Because if it's easier to visualize if you have a little bit of a picture. 
if you if, if you can envision an arrowhead out here then we know the x component down here we know the y component up here to find the length of this guy it's just the length of a hypotenuse of a triangle so we find the length by doing the Pythagorean theorem with x and y components and that's all that this norm operation is doing as well okay to see that a little more clearly you can put uh, you can put uh, 1 comma uh, let's be 1 comma 3 1 comma 3 and then we'll hit enter it'll be 1 squared plus 3 squared right and what we'll get is square root of 10 because 1 squared is 1 plus 3 squared 3 squared is 9 so 1 plus 9 is 10 we take the square root because we're doing Pythagorean theorem we get square root of 10 that's all the norm operation is doing norm works perfectly fine if you put a three-dimensional vector in there and again it's still the Pythagorean theorem 1 squared plus 3 squared plus 9 squared take the square root of the whole thing that's all the sky is doing that's why we get square roots in the answer a lot you can of course convert those to to um, uh, numbers with a decimal if you like so that is how to work with a norm another thing I will show you is uh, really quickly since we just did this a minute ago let me go ahead and clear this off just go to the catalog menu we'll go down to n for norm and we'll just put norm back on the stack and inside this guy instead of typing a vector in we'll just go ahead and put our little guy that we stored in letter G close it off hit enter and it'll calculate uh, this guy and let's go remind ourselves what is inside of G we'll put G on the stack take a look at it 1 comma 5 so when you think about it 1 squared plus 5 squared is 26 square root of 26 so that's what it's calculating so I just wanted to show you that you can use those stored vectors that you put in the calculator for your operations so the norm lives in the catalog menu unfortunately all of the other vector operations don't live well they all live under there but they have another place that's a little more convenient and they live in the math menu in the matrix menu because as you learn more and more about about math you'll realize that vectors are really just a subset of matrices I mean they even kind of look the same they have square brackets but vectors are just kind of like you know they're simpler because they usually only have one row you know XYZ whereas matrices have more than one row so that's why they live under the matrix menu just so you know but if you go up here to vector operations we've already used this menu a lot for the coordinate conversions down here the top three guys is unit vector cross product and dot product so you're allowed to type vectors in or use stored values to calculate your, your those three guys here so what do we mean by the top one unit vector what it means is we're going to supply the calculator with a vector and it is going to come back and calculate a unit vector in the direction of the vector we provide it so let's do a simpler example to show you what if I have a three-dimensional vector and I'm going to make it easy here so we can visualize it 0 comma 0 comma 5 right, I'm going to close this guy off and I'm going to put a bracket so visualize this for me x is 0 y is 0 z is 5 so this vector is an arrow that lies completely on the z-axis xyz completely on the z-axis so you know from looking at this that the length of this vector since x and y are 0 the length of it has got to be uh, 5 right so and the and, and the only direction that this guy even points is purely along the z-axis so what the unit vector command is going to do is go find a unit vector which is just a vector of length 1 in the direction of this vector that we provide to it and when you study calculus and physics and other areas of math you'll learn how to do this calculation uh, by hand but the calculator will just return a vector back to you the vector it gives us is 0 0 1 what it's telling us is the unit vector in other words a vector of length 1 in the direction of the vector we provided is this one this means that it's a little tiny vector with one unit in the z direction the reason it's only in the z direction is because our original vector was only in the z direction it provided it returned a vector back of length one in the direction of the vector that we gave it so it's very easy to visualize it when we make these simple vectors like this let's change the y value to you know 78 or something so this is a very large vector purely in the y direction no other components so the unit vector we get back is going to be purely in the y direction with the length one that's what it does for us but it gets a little bit trickier to visualize when you have a more complicated vector let's put a negative number in here even negative two so this is a negative two for x two for y and four for z the unit vector is going to look quite a bit different so we'll go ahead and hit squiggly equals and make it make it uh, where we have decimals here 
What this is is a vector. It, if you were to plot this vector, it would lie exactly in the same direction as the vector we gave it. But if we calculated the norm of this vector right here, the one that we, if we went and pulled that norm command out and calculated the length of it, it would be 1 because that's what a unit vector is. It always has length 1. So that's what that command does, and it's something that you're occasionally asked to do on a calculus test. It's useful you know, for you to play with and, and to understand. What else do we have under the math menu? We'll go to number four for matrix, up to vector ops. Under unit vector, we have a cross product. Before we do cross product, I want to do dot product because it's a little easier for you to visualize. We'll put dot product on the stack, and what it's asking for is some vectors to perform the dot product on. Now, remember, you need to have two vectors to operate the dot product, and those two vectors that you give you know, for the dot product operation, they have to be the same dimension. So let me show you what I mean by that. Let's put a vector in here, uh, 1, comma, 5. We'll close this guy off. That's the first vector. Now to give it the second vector, you have to hit a comma, and then you open up another bracket to give it that second vector. Let's do 1, comma, 1. So these are both two-dimensional vectors, only in the xy plane, 1, comma, you know, 1i plus 5j, if you, if you will, and this is 1i plus 1k, so x, y, x, y, two vectors. What the dot product does basically is go component by component. 1 times 1 is 1. 5 times 1 is 5. 1 plus 5 is 6. That's basically what the dot product does. And so we get the answer of 6. And you learn how to calculate these dot products by hand when you study these, this section of math. So that's all it's really doing. Now let's look at what happens when we kind of mess up a little bit and stick another, another, uh, another uh, x this so this is xyz so this is a three-dimensional vector this is only a two-dimensional vector you're not going to be able to do that it's going to give you an error because you, you need to have these guys of the same exact length and that just comes out you know because of the way the dot product is defined if you want to force it to work you could put a comma zero here or some other number so now you have a three-dimensional vector xyz dotted with a three-dimensional vector xyz right and there you go. We still get 6 as an answer because 1 times 1 is 1, 5 times 1 is 5, but 0 times 4 is 0, so basically we get the same answer as before. But you can certainly put any numbers that you like in here. You can put, you know, negative 9 or negative 8 or something, and the calculator will go off and calculate that dot product, and you'll always get a number back. The dot product always returns a number. It does not return a vector. It's telling you, basically, what the dot product is really telling you is, if we take these two vectors and we draw them, Okay, and we really want to find out, we want to basically multiply the vectors together, the lengths of the vectors together, but we only want to multiply the components of the lengths that fall in the same direction. So just as a quick sort of uh, something for you to know, if we have a vector lying in this direction, and we have another vector lying in this direction, we're really trying to multiply these two lengths of these vectors together, but we only care about the component of these vectors that lie in the same direction. So the dot product kind of chops down one of these vectors to lie in the same direction, the com to find the component of the, the top vector, so to speak, that lies in this direction, then we're multiplying the lengths. And that's all taken care of by the math that, that, we, that the calculator does and the math that you learn whenever you study the dot product. But it's, it's why it's important. It's, it's useful for taking these two different things that act in different directions and, uh, and to force them to be multiplied together, but only when we care about when they kind of line up, the components of the two guys when they line up. Now quickly I just want to show you that we have a vector stored in variable g, so we can of course use that. And we can, type, we can store another vector and use another letter here, or we can just type the vector out. The calculator is perfectly happy to do that. The reason we got the data type error here is because my g vector is actually only a two-dimensional vector. So let me take this out. So now it's a two-dimensional vector, two-dimensional vector, and go ahead and hit enter. The calculator is perfectly happy operating on this guy uh, because uh, we have different, uh, we have two guys that are operated on each other. One is stored in a variable, the other one is stored here. And before I forget, I do want to tell you that that it can get confusing if you store. Uh, if you store things in single single variable single letter names like that, you might forget that g has a value of a vector in there. So when you use g in some kind of expression later, you might get confused. If you get a wrong answer, it's because it's going to use the contents of g. If you want to clear everything out, you need to go to F6 cleanup, which is second function over here, and go to clear A to Z, and then hit enter to yes. And that's going to clear out all of the single variable names, A, a through Z. So if we go back to G, and put it on the stack, then we're just going to see G because 
uh, that, that variable has been cleared out. So it's probably good to do that every now and again, especially if you start getting a weird answer, because if you forget you have something stored in a variable and you use it two months from now in a calculation, it might actually use the value of the variable and then you'll be confused. Okay, the final thing I want to do is the famous uh, cross product. So we'll go to matrix menu, vector ops. Now that you understand how to use the dot product, I mean, using the cross product is very, very simple as well. So we just need to supply two vectors to this guy. Now for the cross product, you have to supply two vectors in three dimensions because the cross product by definition is kind of like a three dimensional beast. Um, you just kind of have to do that. So what we want to do is we open this guy up and we're going to supply two vectors, x comma y comma z. And we'll close this guy off and I'll put another guy and it could be, you know, negative two comma zero comma seven. Okay, and close this guy off, put a parenthesis. So this is vector one vector this is another vector what the cross product is going to do is it's going to produce another vector a third vector that is basically perpendicular to these uh, to these two so what we get is the result of this cross product is a third vector that is in a direction perpendicular to the original two vectors that we type in and when you go study the cross product you'll see a lot of diagrams and pictures to show you why it's useful there are many 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 equations in physics and other areas that use the cross product because in real life sometimes uh, this kind of this kind of operation just pops up and so the calculator is able to do that for you so that about does it we've learned how to do the uh, norm we have learned how to do the unit vector and we've learned how to do the cross product and the dot product and they're they're basically the core vector operations that you're going to need. Just remember you input your vectors with the square brackets. And then once you know where the functions are located, it's quite simple to get what you need. Don't forget that you can store the vectors in any variable that you'd like. That's very useful if you plan to use a vector over and over and over again. Just remember that if you need to clean it up, go ahead and go in the F6 menu and clean those variables out periodically so they don't come back and bite you if you forget that they're in there and then you do a calculation later down the road.